Welcome to the fourth interview in our series, recognizing former women's athletes, coaches, and administrators from CCIW institutions. My name is Mike Crisman, and I serve as the CCIW's Assistant Executive Director. This series is part of the CCIW's 75th anniversary celebration, and we continue with former Millican student athlete and coach, Lori Kearns. Lori, thank you for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure, Mike. So good to catch up and always happy to help out the CCIW. Great. A 1985 Millican graduate, Kearns was a four-year basketball letter winner and three-year softball letter winner as a student athlete. What followed was a 32-year career as the Big Blues women's basketball coach. She reached the ultimate pinnacle when Milliken won the NCAA Division III national title in 2005. Kearns finished as the program's all-time winningest coach with 556 wins and a 668 winning percentage. Milliken also won 11 CCIW titles during her tenure. She served as the institution's athletics director from 2002 to 2008 and also had a stint from 2000 to 2002. She was the senior woman administrator from 2008 to 2018 and currently serves as Milliken's director of alumni engagement. Kearns is an inductee into the Milliken Athletic Hall of Fame, the Decatur Athletic Hall of Fame, and the Illinois Basketball Coaches Association Hall of Fame. So Lori, I'll start with the first question. Uh, when you reflect on your time as a student athlete at Milliken back in the mid eighties, what do you take away most from that experience? You know, Mike, what I take away most is um, gratitude for opportunity. Um, I came up just after Title IX um, and just after women were finally recognized and validated for loving athletics. So to, for me to be able to wear a uniform at the college level um, was very impactful, transformative and empowering. And I'm grateful for um, the opportunity, but I'm also grateful for those pioneers who came before us. I think of women in the CCIW like Harriet Cornell, my coach and at my alma mater here at Millican, but also Diane Shoemaker at Augie and Rose Price at North Central. And of course the legendary Barb Cothran at Illinois Wesleyan. Those women were breaking those glass ceilings and making it possible for young girls who just wanted to participate, just wanted to play. And so when I got the chance uh, to play basketball and then to be a part of the first ever to start the softball program, I did it with a very full heart and a great awareness that I really was standing on the shoulders of those pioneering men and women who came before me that said, yes, indeed, women deserve the opportunity to participate. So you were a head coach when the CCIW began, CCIW began sponsoring women's athletics. What do you remember most about that transition and what positive impact did that have on the conference? Sure. So um, I was really a part of uh, lots of beginnings. Uh, in 1981, the NCAA first began to recognize and, and celebrate women in athletics. Uh, prior to that, most of our conference schools were members of the AIAW. Um, and then in 1986, the College Conference of Illinois, Wisconsin began to celebrate and honor women athletes and women athletic teams. And what I remember is kind of this, again, feeling of gratitude and this feeling of responsibility to the women who came before us and to the women athletes who are gonna come after us that we needed to continue to do well and to, to do good. Um, I, I loved to compete. I didn't get the chance as an athlete to compete in a conference championship. Uh, I did get the chance to compete in the first ever as a student athlete, the first ever NCAA tournament, a field of 16 women's basketball teams. Um, but then when the conference began to have women's athletics championships, I thought it really opened the door for the holistic experience of an athletic program, department, and conference to recognize the very capable women in our league. So uh, I'm very grateful to both the NCAA and the CCIW. So you were at one time serving as both the women's basketball head coach and the AD. Um, and in fact, uh, when I was in grad school, you came in, uh, and spoke in my class um, about uh, about serving in those dual roles. What was the biggest challenge of that time and what did you find most rewarding? Well, I think the most rewarding part, I'll start there. I felt, I, I think I was the first woman AD, female AD in the conference. And I remember walking into a room full of men and suddenly feeling like it was my responsibility to be the voice in the room and to have a seat at the table to represent the voices of our women's coaches and women's athletes. Um, 
I remember for a long time being the only woman in the room. And I'm grateful now that we have lots of women athletic directors and uh, senior women's administrators in the CCIW. Um, what I remember is that our men athletic directors and commissioners were willing to listen. And so I really did try to do my very best of communicating with the coaches of women's sports mm -hmm. and with the other folks at the conference schools so that when I did have a seat at the table in that very important room of athletic director meetings, I was representing the CCIW, not just Millican, but mm -hmm. the women in the CCIW. Um, what I remember the challenges were um, is I wanted to be a great coach. I wanted to be a great AD. I wanted to do a great job for Milliken and for the CCIW. And so there just simply weren't enough hours in the day. So, um, you know, it started, I loved every minute of it, don't get me wrong, but it started with very early mornings and very late nights. Um, I didn't have a full-time assistant at that point in basketball, and we didn't have a full-time assistant athletic director. So um, I surrounded myself with great people who loved Milliken and loved athletics, and, and we, we just persevered. Yeah, and I remember you talking in my class about you'd, you'd get to the office at like 5 a.m. before the sun even came up some, sometimes, and you know it, it was working on budgets and paperwork and things like that, and then it would go into the rest of the rest of your day. So yeah, I, I remember as a young uh, as a young grad assistant hearing about the the challenges that uh, my future counterparts were going to face. So, yeah, and Mike, I'll tell you the reason I did that is because um, our staff and our student athletes deserved it. They mm -hmm. deserve my very best. I think. I think we all wear many hats in life, whether it's at home or in the community or on our campuses. And, and what we need to remember is we have to do our very best because people deserve it and are counting on us. Absolutely. So when your uh, team won the national title in 2005, uh, what was going through your mind as the final buzzer sounded and the realization set in that Millican women's basketball was a national champion? Sure. Uh, so we were out in Virginia at Virginia Beach. And um, what I remember is feeling so proud of the many people in the stands and back home who were watching, um, both from Millican and the Decatur community, but also again from the CCIW. Um, I very distinctly remember turning and looking at Harriet Cornell, who was the first basketball coach at Millican and my coach. Mm -hmm. And just, she had come, she had made the trip, rode the fan bus and made the trip out there. And just was so proud to share that moment with her and with all of our fans. But I also remember getting on the bus and to go to the airport because we left that night right after the championship. And I remember texting my conference coaching counterparts, the CCIW women's basketball coaches and thanking them because many teams are good enough to win the championship. There's just so much luck involved and, you know, injuries and foul trouble and the draw and so many things. But um, I remember specifically texting Beth Baker at Wheaton and saying, you could have won this championship. Uh, they had beaten us that year and they were ever bit as good as we were. And uh, we just happened to be the lucky one who, who made it through that bracket. Um, in my coaching career, I think I've had other teams that were national championship quality. And I know I've watched in my 35 years being associated with the CCIW, I know I've watched other teams, not just in women's basketball, but in many sports, Mike, who were champions in their own right. Maybe they don't have the trophy in the trophy case back at their school, but the CCIW is the, I'm, unquestioning about this. They are the very, very best of Division III NCAA athletics. So I've asked this question of all my uh, guests so far, but what advice would you offer to current uh, women student athletes? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, again, I think one of the things that is important for a student athlete is to remember to say thank you very often mm -hmm. um, to their coaches, to their family, to their faculty, to um, their trainers, to the person who's responsible for keeping the gym or the track or the field clean and safe. Um, I think they should work really hard to be coachable and to be a great teammate. Um, there is no sport that is just one person. And I think that's a really important lesson that they will carry with them in life. Um, I also have a strong belief that athletics should be a part 
of who each of us are, whether it's as an athlete or as a coach or as an administrator, but I don't want it to define who we are. Mm -hmm. um, athletics will, when you get old like me, Mike, athletics will always be a great piece of my past, but I don't want people to say, oh, that was just the basketball coach. I want to be much more than that, both as an athlete and as a professional. So I think enjoy the heck out of it. If you're a student athlete, uh, say thank you, be gracious, be grateful, uh, be a great teammate. And remember always that you're representing your family and your institution, and you should do that with great pride. Absolutely. Well, Lori, I want to thank you for your time this afternoon. It was a pleasure uh, catching up and, uh, and reconnecting in this interview and um, wish you all the best the rest of this academic year. Thank you. Same to all of you. And uh, again, uh, I would just like to say, I truly believe the CCIW is the best conference in the country. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right.